That's my intro. Okay, let's try this again. You know, for the record, I did try to get this, this video out to you guys on Friday, but it just wasn't happening, man. Um, I know I've been away for uh, about a week. Uh, a lot of real life problems. I'm uh, Not problems, I guess. I'm actually moving to South Carolina to a new house. And, uh, you know, um, I got stuff going on at work where I have to train my replacement. Uh, daughter been sick. She had stomach flu. Just, just a bunch of stuff. So I couldn't get a lot of things that I wanted done. But um, I'm still working on the, the video to deal with the enchant the enchanted gear. Uh, it's, it's it's a work in progress, man. It's a lot of a lot of stuff that has to be uh, that can't just be glossed over. You know, what I mean, you got to really go over what what you're talking about, and that. So video is really long. I'm, I I'm, I want to put out. I'm probably gonna put out um, all one big video. But I may also put it out in segments also in four, three to four segments so that if you wanted to focus on a particular type of gear, you can be able to do that. Um, and I, could, I, I think I'll break it down to three to four different groups. Um, yeah, so I also have a tier list coming out for the month of May uh, for the tier list. It, it will be revised. I, I, I will include Justice in it. Um, Justice still isn't even re released on uh, Server 9 yet. Uh, we expect to see. I, I believe Justice will more than likely be the next um, uh, hero to, to, to grace his presence inside the the, the nations of, of darkness. Um, we'll see, but I believe he, he will be the next one. There's also Freya. Uh, you know, she'll, she will be gracing her presence. I don't have an animation for her yet, but she should be coming not too far at the uh justice they did include some before adding freya and justice despite the fact having animations for justice and having at least a a picture of freya along with her skills which i'll i'll be covering inside the tier list i'll be uh redoing the beast tier list as well um no new beast that i know about but uh, I do want to, you know, update it. I'll, I'll put that in two, I mean, into one single video so that, you know, you know, there's nothing really new really inside of the Beast video. So, but I will be putting that out as well. So we're going to, we're going to go over the altar. So one of the, the, the biggest things that I think people need to understand is um, where you have the altar matters. Like, I, it don't matter as far as point wise. It don't matter as far as, um, uh, any any uh advantages to help with the altar but it matters in regards of where you as a person participating in altar is going to be located at one of the biggest one of the biggest problems that occurs with the altar let me go ahead and get those before we get the 99 one of the biggest problems that occurs in regard to the altar is people don't like to move People, uh, they, 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 they surround themselves around the altar, participate in the altar, and then they just stay there. You know what I mean? You find yourself as an alliance leader or R4 telling people to move, warning people, threatening to kick people out, threatening them to attack people. You'll lose so much of your alliance kicking people loud and trying so much power in your alliance from using, utilizing troops to attack people and port them out to make an example. And truth be told, you're only going to attack and do this to smaller players because you're not going to do it to any of your big players or any players that you guys really like. So the best thing to do is to consistently move the Ulta. Or uh, another good thing that could do and make you don't have to move it every single time is put it far away from where the Alliance gathers. And I, what I mean by Alliance Gather, I mean where you put your, your Alliance um, resource field. Put it far away. You, 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 the, most of the Alliance will stay over there near the resource field so they don't have to travel for 20, 30 minutes to be able to get to the resource field. You also want to instruct your players, your R4s, or the players who you know that's on a lot, who will hit high-level Reapers, to stay over there near the Alliance resource field so that 
when they're hitting when they hitting beasts or hitting uh, the reapers or whatever, people that wants to join in those rallies have to move. So you know you can always let people know at the end of every altar after the lead of the R five ports back to the location. If they could just use Alliance ports to go back over, they don't have to use their um, advanced teleports, which is one of the issues people have. We move our altar. We will move it so that the people can be close to the altar. The reason why being close to the altar is so important is not for as long as the, how long it takes for the attacks to go to the altar. It's more so for how long it takes for the troops to get back to the rally leaders. Um, when it comes to rally leader, I, I don't like when alliances say if your your rally have to be a certain level to be able to start a rally. Don't do that. And instead, let everyone start a rally with whatever their rally size is. Let everyone start their own rally. Tell everyone to pay attention to what rallies that they that they're joining, and the with their other three marches they join. One of the reasons is because not everybody use, is using the same type of troops or the same type of heroes. So a person might be he might be heavy in shooter, heavy in fighter, but the rallies he's joining is a shooter rally. So he's not going to get as much points as he would get if he had joined with a with a shooter rally or or he had did his own rally. So you know you want people. It's better for people to pay attention. Instead, what I would what I would advise is that you tell everyone who have small rallies that if you're going to use small rallies, pay attention to the alliance chat. Pay attention to the alliance chat. The reason why paying attention to the alliance chat is so important, especially for people that use smaller rallies, is because sometimes when the bigger players they're rushing, they're just trying to get into as many rallies as possible. So you pay attention to the alliance chat so that. You're able to, um, so when you see, so people can request their troops back in case they whole march didn't get sent. So they may want to request their troops back. So if you're not paying attention to the Alliance chat, you're not going to see when a person is requesting for you to send their troops back. That becomes important. Like in this scenario here, where I see that my full march didn't go, what I'm going to do is I'm going to text Bouchy and have her send my troops back. She isn't going to be online. She's one of the people who's normally online. We call people like that um, troop hoarders. You know, troop, if you don't send somebody troops back when they're requesting it. In that particular case, um, I thought I had enough time to get to her. This is why sometimes you will see me uh, use speed ups to try to rush to whatever, uh, whatever march or whatever um, uh, rally that I'm trying to get to to get there. All right, so because it doesn't really matter 1.1 million, 1.2 million, 1.3 million people are just trying to make sure all of their troops get in. So they so they so they jump into the biggest marches first. This is what ha this is what's happening. You, you're going to inevitably have to deal with that, not getting all your troops there. If that happens to you, when that happens to you, you need to pay attention because that march will be short when you send it later. It will be short when you send it later. And this isn't happening right now. I'm actually, this is a video. I, I, I did I did the altered video I was going to do. it. I had to redo it over and over and over again. Um, I started having uh, uh, um, problems with the memory on my phone while I'm recording what was going on. So but just to give you guys some animation while I'm talking, I wanted to uh, just have a video plan for you guys. You can see us doing the altar. In that particular case, Bouchy, she was back and forth. And she couldn't get online, so she didn't send my troops back. When that happens, it's going to put you back in total points. So, you know what I mean? It's going to push you back in total points because if your troops go, you're not going to get everything that you need, all the points you can get. So, some other advice is you want to not only just be close to the altar, you also want to be aware of who is close to you. You want to be aware of what five to six to seven guys are the closest to you. Because there will be times where a person may have a rally of 800, I mean, a, a million, and there's 800, 800 troops already in that rally. You know what I mean? They may have a 1.2 million rally. I mean, that's 400 more troops that can, 400,000 more troops that could go inside of there. You will send yours. Two to three other people will send theirs. The person who is closest, their troops is going to go. It's going get to her, get to that person first. So then you end up, not all your troops end up not getting in. So if you if you tell that person to send your troops back, your troops are close to you. And if you're close to them, your troops will reach them before other people's will. So you let someone else deal with that issue rather than you dealing with that issue. So you want to pay attention to who's near you, who's close to you. You know what I mean? I, I, went, I mentioned before, tell everyone who's participating to start their own rally. 
If you don't do that, you're not going to have enough rallies. I don't care if all 100 people participate, you're going to find yourself in situations in which there's no rally available and you're going to be losing valuable time. So everyone should be launching a rally just so they could be able to have one where they're sending their troops. And if they have enough room, somebody else join. And if not, then there'll be other rallies for them to be able to join. You want as many rallies going as possible. Everyone there should be good in the rally. You want everybody to, to increase their rally capacity, but everybody there should be, be focused on sending a rally. Everyone should just be paying attention to what rally they're joining. That's it. Now, what you can't pay attention to is you can't pay attention to what heroes is in that rally. That And it's something that you wish you had time for. But if you take too much time inspecting the rally to see what heroes is there, you're going to lose room inside that rally. So what I used to do, or what you may find some people doing is, they will find a group, maybe four or five people, and they will say, okay, listen, we're porting over there now, let's go right here, be near each other, everybody, make sure you have a shooter, all four, all five heroes are all shooters, so I know I'm sending all shooter troops, because only the rally leaders' heroes count inside any rally. Only The only thing that counts for you in, in regards to your heroes that's in the rally is if you have is the amount of troops you can send for every level one the hero you can send more troops for every level one skill you can send more troop and for certain heroes such as um uh alexia yuri susanna you can send more troops you can send more troops so you know so so that's the only part of your hero that will add to the rally your beast isn't going to count or on anything, just the person who's leading the rally's troops. So if the person's leading the rally, he's sending fighter heroes, and you're sending shooter, you're going to get points, but you're not going to get the max amount of points. So you may want to discuss with the people who you know are going to be there. Tell them to use all shooter heroes and um, to send, uh, so you know to use all shooter troops, and you guys be close to each other to make sure that you can get inside each other rally. You know what I mean? That's something, a strategy you can utilize or if you, you could have the whole alliance be prepared and everybody's rally is sending out with shooters and everybody's using shooters, which reminds me, build a lot of shooters. One, one, one reason in particular is to deal with this. Does that mean you can't get more with fighters? You can. It depends on the, on the, the hero makeup. It depends on how many troops you're sending. And then sometimes, and it depends on uh, the rally size also. You know, so you'll see sometimes where a player might be using T8s and score more points than a person that's using T10. You know what I mean? His troop probably matched up better with the heroes that was going, or he probably had a, a higher rally size than the person who he's sending. There's, there could be other reasons. There's sometimes there are inconsistencies, but for the most point, that part will stay consistent. You know what I mean? Most of the people in my alliance, even if they, even no matter what rally you go to, you're sending all shooters. Shooters have the highest attack, so you're going for the highest points. So going over levels and difficulties, uh, the level, it goes up to a level eight. And the that's just, uh, I, I don't know, maybe the armor of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, of the um, altar. And the difficulty is the blood. If you want to break it down into how it actually affects what's happening. Um, don't worry about defeating the altar. You can, everybody wants to defeat the altar. It's not the main purpose of the altar to defeat it. You can, like, it'll give you some alliance points, which, you know what I mean, like you may want for the use inside the alliance store. Later in the game, the only thing you're going to be using mostly inside the alliance store is going to be um, the, 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 the speed up things, not the, I'm talking about the, the, the march speed ups. That's it. Later, you're only going to be buying march speed ups. You're not going to be buying the regular speed ups because you're nothing to use them on except for maybe troop building. Um, you're not going to be buying the gathering. You're not going to be buying shields unless no one's going to attack you once you get a certain amount unless they're rallying you. You know what I mean? So your march speed up is probably much the only thing that you're going to be pretty much spending your, your alliance points on. And then it gets to a point anyway where you're not even getting a lot of alliance points because of the tech. You know what I mean? The war gets to Valiant Charge is all you can really invest in until that's max. You can use that, I think, once every 24 hours on the territory. The last one is, is Strategist, which is, you know, about destroying buildings. That's a, what you're fighting against on, on your server. And then Development, which is all about, uh, which is going to be dealing with the gathering. I mean, uh, yeah, the gathering speed for the Alliance members, which is the last one 
after a collaboration. Uh, collaboration to me is even more important because it shortens the, the timer. Once you get there, you're not going to be getting a lot of contribution points. So I guess for some people, they may look at the the uh, the altar as a place to get contribution points, but it's not a lot. It really isn't. It really isn't a lot contribution points uh, on a, at a and this goes by the the, uh, the type of the level level eight. You're going to get thirty one thousand of the alliance points and um uh fourteen point eight k alliance contribution. Maybe you might care about your ranking and alliance contribution as far as what rewards you get per week and that I don't know most people they don't really care. The main objective of the altar is about maxing out the reward for damage, which is 1.58 million. Once you hit 1.58 million, truth be told, you don't need to join anyone else's rally. You just need to launch yours so that other people can be able to join yours. You know what I mean? This is the only objective is to be able to get the 1.2K one-star rare equipment chest. Other than that, there's, n there's no real... Uh, great benefit of the altar. All you want is 1.58 million, you know what I mean, points, so you could be able to get your one star rear equipment chest. That's what it's about. It's the only thing that matters. It's very important to get that. Like, this is the only place you can consistently make sure you're going to be able to get gear. This and Reapers. Once you get the Reaper 10 or 11 or something like that, you can consistently get gear. But this is the way to get a, a large amount of gear three times a week. Good level gear, the purple con. You know what I mean? The one study, one star, but still purple. Getting hundreds, hundreds of one particular gear level. You know what I mean? So this is a consistent way of being able to do it. Trying to rank in the top three is not going to really matter. Once you get that 1.58, you've got the most you can get. You know what I mean? You still want to, don't go for your 1.589 points and then say, well, I'm out. No, you need to still continue launching your rallies so that other people can join. Other people are to be able to join. Some people set a timer. You want to know when the best time to set your your um your 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 altar. The best time to set your altar is the times when you can be sure the most people from your leadership can join. You know why the most people from your leadership is more important? Those are the people who actually follow instructions. Most of the people inside the alliance. They don't be following instructions, man. You know what I mean? So, like, you know, you sitting there trying to get as many people to join as possible, but it just makes it harder for the alliance as a whole. Your leadership. And then your leadership extends past the R4. There are R, there are R3s who, are, who may not be at R4 because you only can have eight who are still considered leaders because they know the game. They're consistently on the game, consistently playing. You know what I mean? Those are the people who you want to make sure are meet, are the altar is catering to. The people that are consistently on the game. You know what I mean? You guys, you know them because y'all all on the game around the same time almost every single day. Personally, you know, in my alliance, I'm, I, don't, I barely get to do altar even though I'm the R5 because the majority of the people are on at a different time. You know what I mean? I would rather have it every day at reset, but the majority of the people who are actually on the game playing the most... I make sure that they got they get the altar. That's why I'm not even in the leaderboards for this altar. You know what I mean? You want to if you want to focus on anything, you want to focus on a higher level, then you want to then you want to focus on higher difficulty. Level over difficulty. You know what I mean? So, you know, cuz the, the the difficulty is not adding anything. It's not really adding. Maybe there might be a case for being able to get more points. I don't know, but once you get 1.58 million, that's 58, 59 or something like that, whatever that is, 58 million, that's all that matters. Nothing else matters other than getting that. You need about 61,000 to be able to start getting gear. After that, your focal point should be only on getting that 1.58 million. That's it. No, not focus on getting top three. You know what I mean? Which, of course, if you got that, more than likely you're going to be getting that 1.58 million. Maybe you got a duel going on with people inside your alliance, but that's your only main focus when it comes to this altar. Didn't want to make a long video. Just wanted to make sure I got something out so you guys don't think that I'm abandoning what I, what I want to do here. Um, as always, like, comment, rate, subscribe.